All right, so Negasonic Teenage War has, has entered the contest and let's discuss her. All right, so Negasonic Teenage Warhead comes into the contest with Counter Evade, which is amazing. She has energy damage and passive debuffs. And uh, matter of fact, she also has a stun debuff, but all of her debuffs are passive, but we'll get into that. Let's talk about her combo first. What is her combo like? I, when I was playing her, I had really fun playing her. She wasn't too wonky. You can do, you can play her medium light, medium, or medium light, medium light. Like she has a variety of ways you can play her, but those incinerates and then on her heavy hits she has the incinerate vulnerability and like her animations like i say about almost every champion is absolutely well done i just had fun playing her like she didn't seem complicated she wasn't wonky i like the way she pulls up a finger when she's blocking i think that was kind of cool so overall combo fine with me no complaints let's talk about her strengths one of her strengths is no contact attack no debuffs uh, using a mixture of explosion and reality warping, Negasonic Teenage Warhead's attacks don't make contact and do not inflict any debuffs, only passive effects. This allows her to naturally bypass many difficult defender abilities like Thorns and Petrify. So, yeah, she doesn't make contact. Well, occasionally she does, like maybe on the heavy right there, but her debuffs are passive. And that definitely will come into handy in a variety of situations. She also has access to... Uh, incinerates by simply hitting the opponent with a medium attack or any special attack. Negasonic Teenage Warhead can inflict incinerate passes with a lengthy duration and decent damage. This is very handy for any fight that requires damage over time effects or incinerate damage effects as they will pretty much always be active. So yeah, like inflicting the incinerates on your opponent really easy and they last a decent amount of time as well. I had fun inflicting them. She also has evade counterattacks. Negasonic Teenage Warhead has a multi, uh, has a unique evade called Precognition, which allows her to counterattack and inflict a stun at the same time. When she has a small chance to evade all medium and light attacks, she has a 100% chance to evade enemy counter attacks, such as such from a Bullseye, Killer Instinct, and said and stun them. But she also does have weaknesses. For example, energy resistant and incinerate immunity. All of Negasonic Teenage Warhead damage comes in a form of either energy damage and or incinerate damage. Opponents that are resistant or immune to these damage sources are, will be extremely difficult to deal with, with Negasonic. And as you can see here, I am struggling with this um, Onslaught, but you know, that's Onslaught. Everyone struggles with him, right? He also has a weakness of anti-evade. Negasonic Warhead has a strong evade that can can get used to get out of such situation, but overall her health and armor rating is lower than average. So she's kind of squishy on defense and she's to me, she wasn't that difficult of a defender, but we'll, we'll get into that. And also, last but not least, debuff requirements. Some nodes and some champions are uh, best doubled by placing debuffs on them. Negasonic Warhead cannot place debuffs on the opponent, even with masteries bonuses, and will have a difficult time in these matchups. So keep that in mind. Also, in this situation against Spider-Punk, as you can see right here, I told Kabam about this. I went to intercept, and it left both of us stunned. Didn't know what to do about that. Let's talk about her immunities next. Now, okay, my Mega Sonic doesn't have any immunities. What? What the? F Let's talk about Mega Sonic's awakening ability. As an attacker, Mega Sonic's evade counterattack inflicts three incinerates rounded up, and personal incinerates are paused during her special attacks. Additionally, striker hits and counterattacks pause incinerate and incinerate vulnerability as if they were light attacks. And as a defender, she starts each bar with 100% of a bar of power. So in my opinion, she doesn't really need to be awakened. But if you do get her awakened, I, I think I will put some six stones into her. I don't know if I'll put generic six stones into her, unfortunately. But maybe some, you know, mutant six stones. But I don't think I will use awakening in gem on her, in my opinion. I mean, someone probably will. You know, she does have pretty decent prestige, and we'll get to that. But... As you can see here, the higher the SIG, the more uh, incinerates you get, get on the opponent, up to three, of course, which isn't bad. And since she can already inflict at least five with her uh, medium her medium attack, which I also think is good, and on her SP1, she inflicts so many incinerates, I think that's, you know, kind of overkill. And there's nothing wrong with overkill when it comes to uh, a champion like her. I think she's definitely going to be meta. And in, to get the most damage out of her, the fact that you can pause her incinerates during the special attacks, which is also really great. I think you kind of do want to be awakened, especially in Battlegrounds. Not necessarily for defense, but offensively. She's probably going to end a lot of fights really quickly, in my opinion. So, yeah, I think I would awaken her. Now, I'm, I'm about to show you what she's like on defense. She, like, when she's sick 200, starts off with full bar power. And that definitely can come in handy as a defender, especially with her SP1 being a little difficult to dex. 
and you know i guess yeah i guess i would yeah i'm I don't think i will use that waking at gemma heart her prestige is 18 270 so she has really really good prestige in my opinion i don't know if it's top five or anything but that's pretty decent but kabam has been releasing a lot of prestige heavy champions i don't think many people have been focusing on prestige as of lately so maybe prestige is a thing of the past who knows let's talk about her synergies now i will admit her synergies they kind of were lackluster to me like she has one with deadpool all uh, all champions gain plus 130 armor rating one with emma frost all champions gain plus four percent health and attack rating with chilif hawkling wiccan america chavez all champions gain 90 rating and all that kind of stuff the synergies i liked were the one with human torch phoenix moon knight moon knight and dragon Doctor Strange, excuse me. All below five percent health. The chance to evade medium and light attacks with precondition becomes one hundred percent until an evade is activated. So it's okay. And then one with Deadpool Classic and X Force and Gold Pool and Platinum Pool. Opponents that are immune to personal incinerates are inflicted with ma uh, matching rupture passive with sixty percent of the original potency. These ruptures are still treated as incinerates by the rest of the Synergy Sonic's abilities and effects. So, her synergies, eh, yeah, I, I, I'm a little lackluster for me, but I'm pretty sure people won't use her for her synergies let's talk about her on defense on defense she can be a little bit tricky because her attacks are non-contact so she's going to be uh, difficult to parry but since she doesn't really have any synergies she's going to get melted by almost any champion to be honest like you can just melt her just out, uh, outspace her synergies you can even melt her with um incinerates but be careful with that um precognition because she will evade so that evade can be kind of annoying. So the fact that you can't parry her consistently and she can evade may make her a little tricky of a defender, but I don't think she's going to be a challenging defender. She basically, any champion will pretty much nuke her. As you can see right here, I'm using Hercules. You're going to be able to nuke her and that's it. Like she's not, to me, she's not challenging, but she, with parry being the way it is, you may think your parry is failing when in fact you can't parry her at all and her debuffs are passive. So, hmm, we'll see. All right, for stat focus, I wasn't sure what stat focus to put on her. I instead went with uh, special damage for offense and defense because, you know, of the incinerates, and you can really maximize all of her damage piling on with the incinerate and vulnerability. And as a defender, since she doesn't hit hard, and I don't, she can crit, but since she, does, she doesn't hit hard, you might want the special damage or the special, her specials to do a lot of damage um, when she's defending. But offensively, the more attack she gets, the better like that sp2 is in the fact you pause the debuffs uh, when she's awakened like the not the debuffs the incinerates and the incinerate vulnerability i think that she will only benefit from the special eight percent attack when uh if you have her as a seven star of course but again leave a comment below if you think she'll be better with other stat focus i'm always open to recommendations let's talk about uh relic i didn't really see a lot of good relics for her like i did struggle but i think the storm relics okay and the reason I say that is because Storm, she has um, the six star relic, has the ability where you can decrease the opponent's um, energy resistance. So I went with the Storm relic. I didn't really find any other relic that she would be good for. But again, relics have become kind of meta in this one. And you definitely want to have a relic attacks attached. So again, leave a comment below if you think another relic, she would benefit from another relic. But I only found the Storm relic to be the best. And with the stat focus, she and she can do a lot of damage in my opinion but who knows i i don't think she needs a relic but since kabam is making content that requires relic i would definitely recommend the storm relic or whatever my chat recommends so keep out keep an eye out maybe i'll put out a video um let's talk about masteries the masteries are recommended for her are cruelty and lesser cruelty negasonics uh, base critical rating is higher than average and boosting up critical damage will increase our overall damage output comfortably. Unfazed, because Nikasana Teenage Warhead can safely run into a, an opponent's evade counterattacks and rely on her old invade to save her, she gains the increased critical damage from Unfazed without having to risk taking chip damage as most champions would, so not bad. And of course, parry. Uh, since Negasonic turns parry debuffs into passive, there's very little reason not to have this mastery bonus active in all fights, and I'm pretty sure everyone here runs uh, parry because it's so essential to the game. So definitely recommend having parry on, uh, unfazed, and cruelty and lesser cruelty. She would definitely benefit from those masteries, and I don't think she's really good for the damage mastery, so keep that in mind. But what are my overall thoughts on her? I think she's a good champion. Border in line on great champion. She does have pros and cons. Her pros on, she's fine and awakened. She's relatively easy to play. 
those passive debuffs are definitely going to come in handy when you're trying to fight someone like Agent Venom or Kingpin or Nick Fury. I didn't test out the passive debuff, passive stun on Nick Fury in his second life. Maybe that'll work. I'm not sure. And also, like her SP2, when you have to mash all those buttons, I think that's really a cool mechanic that Kabam add. Something new, something different that, you know, we're not really used to. So those are the pros I liked about them. She has other pros, but those are the four I fully wanted to focus on. Some of the cons, some things that I wasn't all that impressed with was she doesn't really have any immunities. Like ne with the name Negasonic Teenage Warhead, I thought she might be incinerate immune, possibly uh, parry resistant, something of that nature, but nothing. She also like other mutants doesn't really gain prowess. So she's kind of reliant on those um incinerates and if you don't you can't inflict incinerates or the champions immune to them or resistant to them she's gonna falter and struggle which i mean every champion does nothing wrong with that but it's like you know and she also has really lackluster synergies like i kind of expected better synergy maybe different synergies i don't know like i don't know if i've seen um a synergy with colossus maybe she does have one I thought that would be kind of cool, but she does. Oh, she does have a synergy with Colossus. You get perfect block chance, but eh, I, I just expect better synergies from her. And she, uh, since she doesn't have any immunity, she's not good for the damage mastery. So when you're playing her, you kind of align on throwing a lot of specials, especially her SP2, and then like cycling the, her SP1 to refresh those incinerates would not benefit her when it comes to the damage mastery. So, hmm. Not really all that bad of cons. I think the no immunities is the one I'm really focused on. The fact that she has zero immunities, but maybe she'll be rebalanced. I don't, to be honest, I don't think she does even need to enter the rebalance phase. She doesn't really need immunities, but you know, we're so used to having, well, every champion being released usually has some kind of immunity, but you know, maybe it's a different game. So we'll see. But overall, I do like her. I think she's a solid champion and I do want her as a six and seven star. If you did like this video, please hit that like button. And for anyone new here, if you can hit that subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it. Y'all take care. Have a great and wonderful day.